Right guys, a new day, a new job. It's actually Tuesday morning now. Uh, and we're starting this, it's quite a small ensuite. I'll spin the camera around and show you, show you what we're up against. We have got this shower tray. Basically, we're gonna try and make it level access. So we're gonna put a low profile tray in. This corner, it's gonna go slightly larger. I know it's quite, it's quite a small room, but we're gonna try and make it as big as we can. Um, just so the guy can get in and out of it a lot easier. We've got new shower control. We're going to put a fixed head over there, a spray hose. Basically, all that will be gutted. We're going to put a comfort height toilet in. Hopefully, we can reduce the size of this saw pipe box in a little bit. I'm not too sure what we can sort of do with it. It depends on this waste, really. Obviously, we need that shower, shower waste lowering so we can get it on the floor. So until we get some of the panels off and some of the boxing out and stuff, we're not really going to be able to see too much. We're going to put a corner basin in just to give it a little bit more space where this where the shower tray is. Obviously it is a little bit tight for space and we're going to slightly widen the doorway as well. Um, radiator stopping where it is. So yeah, all the tiles will come up. We're going to mermaid board or shower panel the shower area and the rest of it's just going to be re-skimmed and decorated. So yeah, that's pretty much this job. My morning's plan is obviously to get everything ripped out, everything in the skip, and then really the mission is try and get this shower waste lowered um, and brought across to here really. Obviously it's all going to be chipboard floors because it's about 20 years old, the property. Uh, I think these are egg boarding, it might be timber. It might be timber and plasterboard. It better, it's better if it is because we can. What what we really want to do is ply it because we're going to put some grab rails. We're going to ply it and then plasterboard it. Um, so we've got solid fixings everywhere. That one's an outside wall, I think. It might not be actually. Um, but we're going to ply everything anyway, so we can get so we can get fixings. So yeah, that's this job anyway. Um, we'll crack on. I'll get some shots as I go along. The awkward bit really is just going to be that shower waste. I'll see. We'll get service valves and everything put on here, but the, these pipes will move along anyway. And then that boxing might have to stay. Might be able to get that under the floor as well and move them hot and colds up to do away with that boxing. We'll have a look anyway, and uh, we'll crack on. All right, I've just turned all the water off. It's on a mega flow inventor cylinder just the other side of that. So when you turn the cold off, it should drain all the hot as well. We've opened uh, the kitchen tap downstairs all this lot all this lot should be empty in so it should be good just to rip everything out put valves on it and then we'll have a look at sort of the pipe work but yeah i'd imagine most of this floor will probably end up changing anyway because chipboard's a bit of a nightmare we can over ply it but we'll, we'll get everything stripped and uh, go from there it's literally just a case of getting everything stripped out as quick as possible just so we can see what we're up against really so just cut cut and cap the whole holes off waste out and then we can get the pedestal pedestal and basin gone the toilet's gone we'll get the rad off and then the shower tray i don't know what the towels will come off like sometimes we're a bit of a nightmare in these houses but sometimes they drop straight off but we've allowed for replastering and whatnot anyway so it's probably the original bathroom the house is probably about 20 20 ish years old but a bit of a stinky one that. I hate it when they like box pan connectors and it's one of my pet hates as a plumber because that's probably been leaking. But you wouldn't really be able to see until it can sort of come through your ceiling. It's probably been running down even with the soil pipe. But yeah, it kind of smells all musty and damp.
I'll just take some of these tiles off here, and see what we're up against. With regards to the shower waste. Obviously, put gloves on and stuff like that, just these tiles can be sharp. Look at these coming from that. All the tiles come up like that will be lucky. Okay. I think it's been leaking. The floor's going to need patching up anyway, it's been leaking a while around that toilet. We just have to be a little bit careful where we stand. Try and stand you back up. I'll get a shot. The ceiling's got a hole in it. I don't want to go poking too much, but I think it has been leaking a while. That the whole floor's just gone. Just got manky. Obviously, I've allowed for new flooring anyway because you often find stuff like this. But I'm just trying to see where that shower waste boss is into. I don't know if they've teed it with the basin one along there. We'll take a little bit of this boxing off and we'll have a look. Right, so remove this bit of box in here. That basin waste I'll try and lift up because I think it's it's really heavy, it's obviously falling the wrong way. But what I'll try and do is get that onto the floor now to lose all this pipe boxing because it stood out into the room 150 mil. The shower waste, the boss, looks like it might just be low enough for us. So what we what we might be able to do is cut that off. We'll get some of this floor but it's all posh rotten anyway. Just be a little bit careful where we stand because yeah, it's quite spongy. And we should be able to lose that under the floor so the tray can sit down. To be honest, I, I can never understand why builds is building this way. I know it makes it easier to run everything on the surface and there's less chance. Obviously, the plumbers can run their pipe work in and boxed in and then stuck on the surface. But at the end of the day, these were like brand new houses 20 years ago. It's just, it, it's not it's not rough in the wrong place, but when it could have been done different, I, I, I consider that to be a little bit of a, of a shortcut and a cheap, a cheap out, but... That's just my opinion. Obviously, sometimes you have to put the tray on legs because there's no other alternative. But um, obviously, we'll remove all this box in, move them hot and cold into the corner because we've got a nice corner unit going in over there. Obviously, all the towels will come off. I've already got a bit of a sweat on this morning. Um, so yeah, I think I think we're all right with that. I'll, I'll continue to get the rest of this ripped out, and then we've got a blank canvas to work with. 
See, I never like Emil heating pipes, but what what can you do? You know, um, you can't replumb the whole house. I mean, it is copper at least. At least it's not plastic. So yeah, we'll um, get the rest of this ripped out. Obviously, new shower control and stuff going in, and uh, yeah, I think we'll be fine. You always worry, you know, if you're going to be able to lower it or how much damage you're going to have to do. But for this one, we're good, I think. So if you're not seeing these walls before, this is like egg boarding. This has obviously been altered before because all the carcass in it looks like, you know, like egg crate with like triangles or hexagons. And it's only like, what's that, like two by two or something, real thin. It's not proper, proper studding. So what we sort of allow for, because obviously we've got grab rails and stuff to fix, is to sort of take the plasterboard off, plywood behind, and then re-plasterboard in front of the skin. There's no other way you can get sort of, they probably hit a, a baton there or they've gone through the tile but it is better if you can strengthen the walls up a little bit obviously my shower valve is now concealed obviously we've only got probably two inches but on the other side of this is the airing cupboard so worst case scenario if we have to form a bit of a box in the airing cupboard to recess the shower valve in that's what we should have to do because the new control will go somewhere where it is now but obviously the outlets will be over the top so fix that up there and then a body spray with a hose over there somewhere so it's going all right that whole bit of plasterboard just sort of pulled off not too sure what all the rest of it's not coming off too bad but whether they've had a bit of a leak there or it's been patched up before i'm not too sure yeah going all right sometimes these tiles can be a pain you know if it pulls the plasterboard off as well but we're quite lucky on this one right got the tray out that hole was actually already there that's into the cylinder cupboard i think they've just Sparky at some point, it's just dropped all his cables through. Um, so this is like the egg board stuff I was on about. It's just well, a cardboard basically, there's no real strength. No real strength in the walls. Um, but yeah, we'll have a good tidy up. I'll get the rad off next, get the rest of them towels out of the way, and then we can start to get some of this floor up and get the waste pipes altered, and then hot and cold's altered, and then we can get our plasterer in. I need to get the shower valve on site, get all that built in the wall and stuff, and then we can get our plaster in to get start to get stuff put back then. We'll probably use, obviously, moisture-resistant plasterboard and stuff in the shower areas. But it doesn't look like it's actually leaked, to be fair. There's a little bit of moisture in that corner, but the actual plaster work and stud work is probably quite dry. So, yeah, I mean, the tiles, the tiles have probably been all right, but lasted quite well really but yeah we'll um get the rest of these off have a good tidy up and then we've, we've got a blank canvas then to work with these are good if you've not seen these these little i think they're made by arctic case on amazon they come with a tray and you get like 15 10 8 and 22 mil guides just put them around they do actually come with like a ceiling strip but i never use it um so we just whip this whip this rad off we'll turn the trv off we will cap that valve off as well and um, whip this lock shield off so we we'll normally can't turn, but we'll rebalance this system anyway and put an air between and stuff in. If you've just taken it off for decorating. With 8mm with systems, they do take a little bit of balancing to be fair. That was only just, just open. We'll be putting the valves on anyway, so if I, snap, if I snap this off, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure the pressure's gone. I always carry a bleed, bleed key on my van. Give it that hand. Make sure we don't get too much water, then valves are off. And what I'll do is shut that, shut that air tank back off, and then just crack that valve. Just crack it with your spanner. And then with eight, with eight mil pipe, you get no end of movement anyway. I have got my plum thumbs. If I'm working on like a carpet or anything like that, I will put my plum thumbs in. But because this is just such a small radiator, I can, and we're not really too worried about the floor or anything, I can just flip this one over. Right, the whole room's gutted. Um, the tiles didn't come off too bad. What I've got to do next is get some of this floor up. It's all rotten anyway, so we'll replace it all or plywood it or whatever we need to do. Um, I was just looking at that 28 mil pipe there. I think that is the discharge from the unvented cylinder, which is that pipe there. I don't know if you can see it, the light's probably a bit dark, but the one I've got my finger on. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get this up, have a look at these waists and see if we can get these lowered. Obviously, ideally, I want the basin waste. I'll come out a bit, so we'll probably drill holes 
in the joist rather than notching and get it over to that side and the shower waste will run along along here somewhere this will go with the joist anyway and then we'll leave it over here for the time being until we get the tray um, and that should be good I think they might have teed I, I hate joining waste pipes together but they have teed it quite close to the stack There's not too much I'm going to be able to do unless I can get a new strap boss on lower we'll have a look at that anyway when I get some of this floor up it will all become clearer but yeah it's not gone too bad it is just gone quarter past ten and the whole room is good which is good going I think and all in the skip you saw Harry Circular saw yesterday this is my one I got that when I first started I bought that myself I bought it in a kit so it's 14 years old now it's never had any new brushes I've had this thing smoking before but it will not break so it's absolutely fantastic I did a job once in some flats and it had that soundproof matting down I had to put heat, heating systems in all these flats so you was cutting through like plywood soundproof matting and then the chipboard and the rubber used to melt and go like in the blades and this this poor old saw I took some hammer on that job but still not broken it's absolutely a good bit of kit yeah, so that's what I've always rocked. My jigsaw, it's not in that box, but my jigsaw is original as well. It's 14 years old. Obviously, that's my second multi-tool, uh, second SDS drill. Um, that's about my third battery drill, to be fair. And second impact driver, original recip saw as well. So a lot of the stuff does last a long time. It just obviously gets hammered, abused, and that's what it's there for, isn't it, really? So yeah, I'm going to get some of this floor up and... We'll hopefully not cut through any pipes or cables and we should be all right so what i'm going to do is mark along where i think my joist is there's a, there's a nail hole if this pen will work Let's try this one why do i never have a pen that works so we'll mark along there level line i think there's another pipe here as well somewhere you can fit in it Underneath, I've only got my blade set to the depth of the chipboard anyway, and we'll just cut straight along. It might be the gas pipe, and then down here actually. So, ideally, we don't want to cut that one. Get, get this whole section of floor cut up. floor up in this corner now this is what we're up against obviously they've teed and then that one feeds the basin that one fed the shower so it was what was open to cut that off there and drill through drill through there and then we're in line with the joist then and then ones will go that way i think we should be right i think the, these are the old marley bosses i think on these they were like a weird 
don't really see him. Somebody will probably correct me in the comments anyway. But yeah, it's kind of a strange strap boss. So the fit's like glued on there. I can't remember, I think they're the Marley ones. Does it sound tight? Made in England. What is it? M U P V C U. I think it's Marley. So I can't see the brand. Oh it's terrain. I don't know. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do anyway. I think that one's a gas pipe, that one's the unvented discharge. So, I mean, worst case scenario, I might be able to get a boss lower down, but I'd sooner not, because it can get tricky. And then, obviously, it will lose all that pipe work across there then, which will be better. And then, all this floor will have to come up anyway. It's all posh rot. I'll have a good tidy up with the floor as well. You can see all this is just, just rubbish. So, yeah, we'll be all right, I think. We'll get them in. Get that one across there and get them hot and colds out today as well. And then I'll ring up about my shower valve. I'll just spin my camera. So yeah, I'll um, ring up about my camera. Uh, ring up about my shower valve and we'll get that mounted up there as well. Got a bit of sweat on. Um, so yeah, we're going all right. Plodding along nicely. You never quite know what you're going to find on these sort of jobs until you actually start. Which that makes plumbing interesting. If it was the same every day, it'd be boring. But yeah, hopefully we should be all right on this one. And we'll carefully leave ourselves enough to get back on there. The stack's wobbling around a bit, I don't think it's clipped. Don't do what I did once and drop my hacksaw as well. Straight down the stack box in. Oh. It's never easy, is it, plumbing? Keep meaning to get some of them um, cutters for the solvent weld. That blade. The blade's probably not doing me a lot of favours there. Let's cut that as straight as we can. And leave ourselves enough to get on it. Without snapping any of the pipe. I'm conscious I don't want to snap it off. Do it left hand and cut it. Probably cut a little bit more off that anyway, yeah, because my elbow, my elbow will probably sit down a little bit lower. We'll get that inch and a quarter cut off. Right, been looking at this for a minute, and I don't think I'm going to get it low enough. And now I can trim a little bit more off that. But even so, it's still going to be too high. So we've sort of got, well, we've only got two options. We can either cap these off and try and get a boss lower down, or we can cut that T there and then try. You, you, if Sometimes if you're lucky, you can get the old solvent elbows off if, if you cut along and then flick them off. So it's a little bit of a skill, but sometimes you can get them off. And then I can glue a T flat It'll pick the basin up that way and the shower up that way. Ideally, I don't like tea and, tea and waste together. It's not perfect, but this is real world. Obviously, I'm really going to struggle without breaking into downstairs to get a boss lower because I've got to get my drill in to drill it. Obviously, I've got no room. Um, so, yeah, whatever, whatever I do, I'm going to struggle. But I think if we can get that tee off, it would solve all of our problems. Because this, because this could then go flat, we'd be at least two inches lower, and we'd be coming through, through low down, through nearly on the middle of the joist. To be honest with you. So that's my first plan. And if that doesn't work, well, we'll cross that bridge. Not a lot of room to operate. So we, need to, we need to cut right there. G 
Jr. He's here. That went wrong, didn't it? I was hoping just to get that off there. But we have got a plan B. What we're going to do is we're going to cut, cut below that short bar socket. We're going to glue a new short bar socket on and then just build the stack back up. We might need to use a slip socket up here. So we'll cut some of this plasterboard off. We'll put a new T in and just go from there. Then that way it's got separate bosses and everything. I think I've got a short bar socket in the van. I'll have to have a look. Uh, if not, I can always pick one up in the morning. But the awkward bit is just going to be cutting the stack. Once we've got the stack cut, um, will be perfect because then at least then everything's separate. I just thought if I could have got that off, I could have put a T on there and it'd have been fine. But we're not going to bodge, we don't bodge, we do things properly. So that's how we're going to take it. I'll cut some of this plasterboard off and uh, yeah, we'll just replace it through to there, not a problem. So I've got a short boss in the van, a poly pipe one, and a socket. Ideally, I prefer that to be a slip if there's no movement. But what I'll do, I'm going to cut the stack there and then I can always slice down, I need to go, go get fetch, fetch a tea anyway, I can measure what the bits I do need. I just slice down and then I can always cut the inside, the stack inside out if that makes sense. And then that short bar socket will glue lower down and that will get all my waste a lot better hopefully. And then the T, we can spin the T, so we're just bringing it out 145 as well, rather than two. Can't spin it currently because it's all glued up. And it's slight concern, when I cut that stack, it might drop, which can sometimes happen. I don't know if it, I've got a look on the outside, it might go straight through the roof. I imagine it should be vented, it might just be a dirt in the roof though, in the attic. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem very well clipped, to be honest with you. But yeah, we'll have a look anyway. I'll just get cut it with a wee sip saw and then I'll have to chamfer it and get it sorted. We've all got it there somewhere. <laughs> Drop. Sure. 
I'm just going to lift it up so it won't need to be a slip. I just need to make sure that won't drop. Which it probably will. Yeah, that's going to drop right down in it. Let's get this out of the way. Cut it off here. I just can't see a thing. Surely, is there an easy way of doing this? Probably. Got to get that in there. Right, I've managed to cut that off as straight as possible. What I should have said is that I didn't actually drop anything down the stack, but it's sometimes better to put something in the stack to stop stop stuff falling down. You can see I managed to get my multi tool. I don't know how much my GoPro I managed to pick up, but basically I cut down and then get my multi tool inside and then cut from the inside out, and you get you get a decent straight cut then. So that's that's perfectly low enough. What I might do. Is pop off to the merchants and pop down the yard see if I've got a bit of black pipe. So I need a socket, a socket there. So my T will come here, 45, and then this will push back up to where it was before with another socket. So I need a bit of pipe, a 45, and a T, and then a couple of boss adapters. So I might nip off now. It's about 12 o'clock anyway. Um, so I can have my dinner while I'm out. I'll wash my hands as well. I should have said put gloves on as well. But you want to about that one so at least that we can put separate base and waste separate separate shower waste in and then the toilet we might even be able to push it back a little bit more to get it tighter in much better it's a bit a bit awkward but get the awkward stuff out of the way and then we should be fine all right so i'll pop off now make sure that window's shut and we'll get them bits all right these are short bar sockets so you get one that comes with the whole audio out and one we need to drill in. So we can either put the inch and a half one in there or the inch and a quarter, it doesn't really make any difference. They only had white, white inch and a half bosses as well. Again, it do not make any difference. Nobody's ever going to see it. Um, so we need to come up with a short bar socket, short piece of pipe, socket, T, and then sh short bit of pipe, pipe again, and then into a socket. We'll put it that at the same height. I think that's just on a dirgo in the roof. I mean, if I was building the house, I'd have probably done it with a full stack, but it depends how many down the road are vented. Normally, you only have to vent one in three, and this one's never been a problem, so I can't ever see it being a problem now if it's been up to sort of 25 years. Uh, so I'll get this bit done. A little bit under pressure today because the phone won't stop ringing. I've got literally, I'll spin the camera. Oh, there he is, look. Um, I've literally got five or six jobs to get to tomorrow. Thursday, I'm all day pricing. Friday, I'll have to try and get back here if I can. But I'm just conscious how long this video is getting. So what I'll probably do is get all these waste pipes in today and then do like the shower valve and that on another video. But I should be able to get some good footage tomorrow as well if they're, if they're you know, you can't always film on every job. You know how it is sometimes. Um, but yeah, I'll get this bit done. Um, and then I want to get these waste pipes in so then we can get the floor and everything repaired. Ideally, I want the hot and cold zone as well. So I'm going to crack on with this now and I'll get some shots as I go along. Just glue in 
I think you want yeah, inch and a half I'm looking for, I think. It ends up looking something like that. So when you get that in there, there's no lip anyway. So put plenty of glue on these. I really like this glue you get from Plum Center because the brush is really wide on it. Some people clean, you don't really need to clean with pressure pipe as long as you put plenty, if it's not pressure pipe, it shouldn't leak. Um, you don't normally get leaks on solvent weld if you've got plenty of glue on and then just wipe the excess off. And it's as simple as that. That'll be, that'll be perfect. Same with the inch and a quarter. So plenty of glue in there. Plenty around there. Double glue everything where you can. Sometimes it is tricky all the way around and then put them in with a slight twist like that and then just wipe the excess off. These poly pipe ones are good. I, I prefer the poly pipe ones over anything else. So we'll get down there. I've had to, I've had to bring my torch in just because it felt like it was getting a bit dark in here. the fin first, plenty of glue on there and then just round my pipe and plenty of glue on there and angle it and twist where you want it. Perfect. So I've just dummy that up. The centre of your outlet spigot from the finished floor will be about seven and a quarter. So obviously we need a slight fall. Yeah, that's, a little, that's a little bit high, but what I'll do, it that needs lifting up anyway a bit. So I just need to get my measurement across. So there, so that, that's a little bit high anyway. So if we went seven inches, that will just bring that down a touch and then we'll work the last bit out. Right. Um, let me just turn this torch on. So I've got all this stack old. I might swap that for a slightly shallower bend. It will twist because it's on push fit now. These these do spin. Um, so I've got separate basin waste and shower waste now. So it's much better. So I can just crash these in basically or put them in with care. But you know what I mean? That's the hard bit done. So I'll get them in and then have a tidy up. And that's as much as I'm going to film on this job for today because I'm just a bit concerned the video is getting quite long and it would take me a long time to edit. I will cap that TRV off as well, don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, as I say, if this is the end of the video, um, I might film a little bit on the waist, but if this is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching as always. And I'm gonna try and do two videos a week, but I can't promise because it's, it's not so much the filming, it's the editing that takes the time. You're surprised how long, even like a half an hour video will take me two or three nights to edit. It's probably three, four hours working that. Um, so yeah, thanks for all the support. If you're new, subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you didn't enjoy it, hit the dislike button. And I'll see you all next week. Thank you all for watching.